Hello Makers! Welcome back to another episode of 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe, and today we're not going to talk about these Groots. What we're going to talk about is how I managed to print these Groots, and what I had to go through before that. Stick around. Welcome back, makers. So as you can see from my table of baby Groot carcasses here, um, I've had my fair share of failures when it comes to prints. Um, I've had failures on all three printers at some point. Um, and I thought to myself, the best way for me to use what I've learned in these failures is to make a video about it and how I went about fixing each problem. Um, granted that at some point I've had so many failures, Micro Make Delta 20, um, that I thought to myself, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to try to print it again. I figured out what the problem is, what the issues were, but I just, I, I, I just couldn't. I really couldn't anymore. I wanted to print something different. That was the Delta. These were on the Prusa. For, uh, I've tried use, printing it in uh, cork fill um, at 0.15 millimeters. It just wouldn't print. This printed on the Delta. Um, this was in uh, filamentive natural wood. It printed fine straight away, first try. This printed on the uh, Duplicator i3+. Plus. It took me a few tries, but that's because I was trying to dial in the settings. This was printed on the on the one how duplicator i3 plus came good. This came pretty much flawless on the Prusa i3 Mark II. However, getting to those prints um, took a while. So I said to myself, let me make this video and share with you what I've learned so far in the past two months. So first things first about the three D printers themselves. I've done reviews on all my three printers. I will be doing more reviews um, as time goes along. However, there's something I've noticed in each printer. If you have the time, if you have the patience, if you have the general know-how, always go for a kit. It might not turn out perfect straight away once you build it, but kits teach you a lot about the printer itself. It helps you when you need to tweak certain things. It helps you to know when something goes wrong with the printer. Um, when it's pre-built, you wouldn't know what the process was from start to finish, unless you have quite a bit of knowledge on 3D printers. So always go for a kit when you can. It will help your knowledge. It will speed up your learning curve on 3D printers. And to a certain extent, it will also assist you in upgrading printers nozzle height calibration that will probably be the or bed calibration that will probably be the biggest headache you will encounter from the get-go if you're buying a 3d printer for the first time it'll take time no matter what the model is if you're printing a kit um, like for example the Prusa has the auto bed leveling it's fine it's great once you set it up Setting it up, finding the right height of the Pinder probe is not that easy. It takes a while. And sometimes you might do something wrong, so you have to redo the whole bed in itself. Um, getting the right height from the nozzle, for example, the Duplicator i3 Plus, um, it came pre-assembled. And it's easy to level the bed just with four screws. However, knowing exactly how far off the nozzle should be from the bed is a bit tricky. Everyone tells you to use either a business card or a piece of paper, but you don't exactly know um, how much friction there should be between the uh, the paper and the nozzle. So it's a trial and error. Um, just don't give up, keep trying. The best way to do it is find what you think is probably the right height of a paper, um, as in just a little bit of friction in between and do a test print. Um, what I would suggest is use a PLA and try to find the most contrasting color against the bed you're printing on. If the bed is black, 
um, use white because when you use white, um, possibly PLA, you can actually have a much better view of the thickness of each layer. If you, you have a red um, uh, heat bed, use black or white again, just as long as there is quite a bit of contrast. If you have a black heat bed and you're using a black PLA to calibrate the Z height, it's going to be near impossible to find the right height straight away. As the first filament you'll ever use, I personally would suggest always start with PLA. It doesn't matter which company it's from, um, as long as it's PLA. That is only my opinion, of course. I'm sure people might differ. However, I found that PLA is the most forgiving in terms of testing out every single printer for the first time. It's also very good for learning. Um, PLA is very forgiving in terms of clogs and retraction speeds and distance and temperature ranges. It's just possibly the most user-friendly filament you can find. So start off with PLA and get used to your slicer. Um, print something easy, print something complicated, doesn't matter. But print as much as you can with it and play around with settings as much as you can. Not only you will learn more about the filament itself, uh, but you'll also learn about the slicer and how much your printer can handle. Because if your printer cannot handle much tweaking in terms of PLA, um, then it's most likely will not handle much more complicated filaments. When it comes to heat bed, um, we now know that obviously when you have a heat bed, um, you just have more flexibility in terms of uh, adhesion with printing different kinds of filaments. However, certain filaments like PLA, more heat does not mean more adhesion. And I've learned that um, kind of the hard way because when you start reading and hearing um, people saying that, oh, you need a heat bed for more adhesion, automatically you assume that the more heat you have, the more adhesion you will have, which is not necessarily the case, especially for PLA. The more heat you have on PLA, on the heat bed, the more warping you are susceptible to. I kept having these issues on, uh, on some printers of mine until I realized that if I go over 55 degrees, um, I start getting warping. Um, and until I got to that point, I had many failed prints. Prints kept coming off. I had um, uh, printers failing during the night because I, I left them running because I thought PLA would possibly go wrong. And I come back in the morning and it's a whole spaghetti mess. And only after a certain amount of time, I realized that lowering the bed temperature with PLA is actually um, quite a good thing because you get to have more adhesion. Now you have your 3D printer set up, you're ready to go and you start printing. What will eventually happen, and this is not an option, it's inevitable, um, is a clog. And clogs are possibly the most frustrating things you can have on a 3D printer. The most important thing of clogs is to learn from there. Clogs can happen either at the nozzle end, either at the, the heat block end, or possibly in between the heat block and the heat sink. It's all a matter of you watching the printer while it prints and reading what it's telling you. It will give you telltale signs if you're printing too fast, if you're printing too slow, if the temperature is too high or too low. You might be doing retraction settings all wrong. You might be doing too much retractions or the speed of the retractions. It's just a matter of you sort of taking a breather, looking at what happened and learn from it. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I've had 20 fails on the Micromake Delta for clogs and it wasn't the nozzle itself. It was mainly due to me having hit my, um, my heatsink fan, breaking one of the fins, making it really inefficient. So I had something called a heat creep where the filament itself that was being melted in the heat block was actually creeping upwards towards the heatsink. By the time I figured out, as I said, I just didn't want to print this 
uh, particular model anymore. I will get to it again, I'm sure of it, because I don't like to give up. 20 prints, 20 attempts tells you I'm quite persistent at what I do. Um, but not just now. I don't want to end up dreading a printer because of clogged nozzles or my mistakes. Um, so I'll just give that some time. I'll print something different, different material, just to keep the excitement going and I'll move on from there. Speaking of clogged nozzles, um, there is something called a cold pull, where you heat up the hot end, you insert filament, and you let it cool down. And then when it's about 110 degrees, what you do is you pull the filament upwards, um, and it's not hot enough to be melted, um, and it's not cold enough to be completely solid, but it, it's it's quite soft. So what happens is you pull the filament in the nozzle all in one piece. I was about to try that and I was I was feeling a bit uncomfortable um, sort of pulling on all of the extruder part because I don't feel they're very secure. <laughs> um, and I didn't want to do it the wrong way because uh, I would end up, I don't know, breaking something on the printer. Um, so I thought to myself, there must be an easier way. And I've managed to find a way which kind of works for me. I'm going to show you. Now for this method, what you will need is a pair of long nose pliers. You will need the uh, clogged nozzle, a hot air gun, um, and you will also need a um, few centimeters of filament, um, the same material ideally that you had when the nozzle got clogged, but possibly a different color. Um, because it will tell it's much more visible whether or not you've managed to clean out the nozzle. So first, what you need to do is heat up the um, the hot end itself while it's on the printer, unscrew it, and take a pair of long nose pliers. While it's hot, um, or even if it's cold, all you can do is just heat it up. And what will happen is, once it heats up to a certain amount of degrees, what you'll see is the PLA itself inside, or whichever material, just literally starts oozing out by itself. I'm gonna just... like that. So once that's done, you switch off, grab a pair of tweezers to remove that part, just like that. And once it starts cooling, you insert a piece of filament and you let it sit there just for a couple of seconds, just enough for it to start cooling down. Now, I usually tend to leave it for about 30 seconds, 40 seconds. I guess it depends on the weather. It's a bit cold here at the moment. So it tends to cool down much quicker. But then, once it's done, you pull it out. And as you can see here, I've managed to pull out all the inside green that was left. And if you put this on a darker background, you can actually see the tip of the nozzle also pulled out with it, the actual minuscule tip. And that saves me the part of actually tugging and pulling on the whole extruder and hot end itself while it's still attached to the printer. Another issue I've had is prints stopping halfway up, not because of a clog, but because of a kink in the spool itself. It's not necessarily because I hadn't spooled it or something happened to the spool, it just came like that from the factory. Now with some filaments, um, you can see that it's been uniformly uh, wound up to the spool. You can see they're absolutely perpendicular to each other and it's flawless. It makes my OCD very happy. <laughs> However, you get some spools which are definitely not uniformly spooled up. So what tends to happen is they might overlap on top of each other. And at some point during the print, that overlap um, starts getting quite tight and it just stops feeding the extruder. The extruder will grind the filament and it just stops pushing out filament. 
So what I would suggest is when you have a spool that you can see is not properly spooled up, rolled into the spool, grab a few meters of it first, unspool it, make sure there are no kinks. If it's fine the first meters, then it'll be fine usually most of the way of that print. Spool it back up and it should be good to go. Now having said all this, prints will fail. Print fail is not an option, it's just inevitable. At some point or another, it will happen. Even the most expensive of printers have issues at some point. So please don't give up, keep at it. What I can do from here on out, after having told you everything I've encountered is give you a few of my suggestions um, just to be more prepared. Tools are probably the most important thing you will have in your arsenal um, to help you out in 3D printing. First and foremost is get yourself a heat gun like I just used on the nozzle. Um, it is very effective for many things, not just cleaning up nozzles. It's also effective um, for cleaning up prints, especially light stringing. Make sure you have yourself a good pair of tweezers. Um, uh, make sure you get yourself a lot of acupuncture needles to help you in clogs because sometimes you don't need to take apart the whole thing just to clean a clog. You can just insert an acupuncture needle, just wiggle it around a couple of times and that will help. I bought myself about a hundred of them for about five euros off eBay. So make sure you get yourself some of those. Last but not least, I did not buy this. This came with the Duplicator i3 and it's what I call the 3D printing shepherd stuff. <laughs> it's, it is an absolutely awesome little tool. It doesn't have to be this. Um, I, I'm sure you can find possibly another type of rod. But when you have a clog which happens between the heat block and the, uh, the heat sink itself, once you unscrew the nozzle, you can just push this through from the top and it takes out everything and it saves you the hassle of having to clean up um, or take apart all of the hot end itself. Get yourself some spare parts. You might not need them. Um, you might never use them, but the one time you need them will be the one time that you'll glad that you have them. Get some nuts and bolts, uh, the same as the ones on your kit or your printer. You never know what might happen. Get yourself um, an extra heater cartridge, an extra thermistor. Once again, you might never use them, but it's always good to have a spare um, because if something happens, you're just stuck until the delivery comes through of the parts you ordered. Make sure you have some extra PTFE tube. It comes in very handy. And most importantly, always have backup of nozzles. Not just to have backups if something goes wrong, but get different nozzles, get different sizes, test them out, because you might buy a filament. Anything that has that is a special filament that has possibly wood, wood in it or, or whatever, any other type of particle might require a larger size nozzle. So get some extra ones. They're not expensive, but it's always good to have. And finally, read up. The internet is full of information. You have Facebook groups of 3D printing. You have YouTubers. Not, I, I mean, I'm just a noob. I'm just starting out and I'm learning along the way. And I've learned this much, not just of what I've been through with my 3D printers, but by watching a lot of YouTubers and all the issues they've come across and how they solve them. So read up watch videos, read blogs, get to forums, inform yourself. The more knowledge you have, the more you're prepared for success. Don't be afraid of failures. As I said, it's not an option, it's inevitable. It's just a matter of how you handle the failure and what you learn from it. Most importantly is don't be afraid to break your printer. Every single part of the printer is replaceable. So whatever happens, tinker around, try to make it better. If you think it would make something better, do it. If it breaks, just put it back as it was before. No harm, no foul. It might cost you a few dollars in parts, hopefully not too much, but it's replaceable. 
Don't be afraid to tinker around. That's what 3D printing is all about. Try every kind of filament you can. As most of you who follow me on Twitter know, I'm passionate about filaments. I want to try every single filament. I've, I have carbon fiber filament, ASA, I have nylon, I have PTEG, uh, PETG, sorry, um, PLAs, ABS, I have all kinds of flexible. I, I want to try every single filament out there. Don't be scared to try different filaments. Um, I, I was scared of trying ABS in the beginning um, because of, I, it's just so many people don't like it. I actually love it. I think it's one of the um, the nicest printing filaments that I have. Granted, I only print small things with it um, because I don't have an enclosed chamber, but I love it. So try it out. Try everything. Most important out of all these things that I've said is to have fun. 3D printing is all about creativity. It's all about letting out your imagination. Whether you're printing something that someone else has printed, whether you're printing something that you've created, no matter how simple it is, no matter how complicated, have fun. It's an awesome hobby to have. It might get expensive, um, but it's absolutely awesome. So don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. Embrace the failures and have fun doing it all the way through. Having said all that, I've babbled on for long enough today. Um, I've managed once again to keep my voice hanging in there for the whole of the episode. Yay! <laughs> um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. In the meantime, have fun, share, like this video, leave a comment. I love replying to comments. Find me on Twitter. Um, I now have a PO box. Um, I left it in the about section of my YouTube channel. So if you want to send me something, whatever it is, whims, tiny, big, whatever, send it. I'd love to showcase it. In the meantime, guys, happy making. <laughs>